Uh, my name is Eric Barnstead. I actually work with Clemens in the Azure team. We have an engineering team here in Munich. So welcome to Munich. You got the best day of the year to be here today. Uh, 38 degrees Celsius today, apparently. So uh, it's nice and warm. So Clemens and I um, started about OPC uh, pretty much a year and a half ago or something like that. And he convinced me that OPC was worth uh, pursuing. So um, here I am and talked a little bit about what Microsoft is doing together with the OPC Foundation. To sum it up, Microsoft loves OPC UA. <laughs> <laughs> so why do we love OPC UA? We love it because it's open, it's open source, it has industry-grade security built in, which is very important to us, especially when you start talking to the cloud. There's millions of devices out there that speak OPC UA or OPC. If they don't speak OPC, you can get a, uh, an adapter for a relatively cost-effective uh, money in terms of what a device actually costs. And I specifically talk about devices because I think it's more than just manufacturing. OPC UA really has the, the uh, charter of becoming the world standard for IoT, and um, I'm very excited about other verticals that are now knocking on our door or sending us email about, you know, OPC UA in different verticals, smart buildings, you know, energy, all those verticals. It doesn't have to be just manufacturing. OPC UA is so flexible that it can cover them all. So a year ago, when Clements and I were at OPC Day, I presented that we had shown an anti-C stack running a Windows 10. That was it. And what a difference a year makes. Right now, with Hanover Messe, we had a pretty large booth, and we were pretty busy. But by far, the busiest pod was the OPC pod on our booth. So we were so busy, we had har hardly had time to go for lunch. You know, we had so many people there who wanted to know about what we had to show. And um, we actually made it onto the front page of the, of the newspaper at uh, Hanover Messe, which I thought was pretty, pretty good. So at Hanover Messe, we introduced the integration of OPC UA into the Azure IoT suite. And with that, we mean a deep integration, which means that we are actually now able to run OPC clients and servers directly on Azure. And we can also connect to existing OPC UA clients and servers on premise, and we don't require any changes to those devices. For that, we introduced the OPC publisher, which you know, uses the upcoming PubSub spec. And it sends telemetry data from those devices to Azure. We also introduced the field gateway, and we have a field gateway SDK available on GitHub that allows edge analytics, store and forward, those kind of things that you want to do on-prem before you send the data to Azure. You can also do filtering, of course, whatever you prefer. So the OPC publisher is important because we, when we talk to customers, they always say, yeah, connect our devices to Azure, but don't make any changes to the devices. They're in production. They're you know, running. You know, no changes allowed. Similarly, the uh, um, infrastructure on premise is set. There's no changes allowed there either. So the firewall settings and all those things. We say, yeah, we need those couple of ports open. They say no, right? So what we've done is the OPC publisher allows you to you know, connect to those existing devices, you know, create a subscription, then send the data to, to Azure in JSON over AMQP format, and we also have um, support for things like WebSockets and so on. So you only have, you know, uh, what is it, uh, 443, port 443 open on the, from the inside out, and all inbound ports are closed. For that to work, we use what Clemens actually wrote a white paper on, is service-assisted communication. It allows you to initiate the connection from the premise, and then once the connection is established, obviously, information flows in both directions. Um, on top of that, obviously, we use TLS encryption, and we also 
use the OPC UA security model with certificates, right? So we actually encrypt everything twice. Um, with this approach, we're now also able to run, like I said, OPC UA clients and servers in the cloud. And we show that we can, uh, we've implemented the OPC client as a web site, as a web application. And we could control devices that had never been controlled from the cloud. No changes except, you know, specifying an IP address. We could control those devices from the cloud in a secure way. So, and we announced the integration of Windows 10 with OPC UA. I have a little bit on that later on. So after the Messe, I got about 1,000 emails with pretty much the same question, where's the stuff? Because you said, you know, you're going to make this available. And I'm pleased to say that most of it is already on the OPC Foundation GitHub. The pieces that are still missing are going to come in the next couple of days, Martin, <laughs> or weeks. <laughs> And, um, you know, we're obviously, um, for the command and control solution, which requires a little bit more setup, we want to build something pre-configured that you just have a single click deploy and you can play with it. Yeah. One thing we're also actually quite interested in is to port our OPC publisher to the ANSI C stack. So anybody interested and have really small devices, I'd like to hear from you because fundamentally we want to also make that available on GitHub. You know, I'd really be interested in a joint collaboration project so we can say this stuff is actually tested and running on real devices. I mean, obviously, what we're working on are reference implementations, but we have the charter to make those really industry grade, even if it's a reference implementation, so that you folks can use them pretty much as is without having to re engineer everything. So, like I said, we announced that we have Windows 10 support for OPC UA clients and servers, and obviously also for the publisher. For that, we built a, an app, which you see running here on a backup system, and also on my cell phone. Um, it's the same app, it's the same source code that runs on all of these devices. And Windows 10 obviously also supports HoloLens, and you can just run that same app on HoloLens without requiring any changes. And Stefan here uh, had the opportunity to test this. And um, I'm going to show you what it looks like. So obviously, it's a two-dimensional application. It was built for the desktop. What HoloLens allows you to do is obviously it maps your environment, so it knows where the walls are and where the tables are and so on. And then you can take a 2D app and pin it, for example, to a wall, and that app's going to be there forever, right? unless you turn off HoloLens, right? And what I'm going to show you is a mixed reality video, which means that you actually see what you see when you're wearing HoloLens. So here it is, same app on the wall in a conference room at HMI. And um, you interact with it with these gestures, and it just works. So obviously, this is a first start. It's going to get really interesting once you start building three-dimensional user interfaces for these apps. But the plumbing is done. OPC clients, servers, and publishers run on HoloLens today. So if you have an OPC server or an OPC client, you'll be able to interact with it using HoloLens. So, just, um, so what's next for us? So at Hanover Messe, I said, we're just getting started, and I meant it. You know, there's a lot more we're going to do with OPC UA. One of the things we're working on right now is the .NET Standard uh, platform. To explain .NET Standard, you just have to imagine what happens if you combine the universal Windows platform with ASP.NET Core, which is actually the new name for ASP.NET 5. So they just renamed it. Plus, obviously, Xamarin now belongs to Microsoft, so we integrated Xamarin as well, and the result of that integration of those three platforms is called .NET Standard. It's currently in release candidate, and we have ported the universal Windows stack that we had to .NET Standard, which means that for the first time, we're able to run OPC clients, servers, and the OPC publisher on all common platforms. 
And it's, again, it's the same source code. There's no if defs. It just works. And it also supports ASP.NET 4.6. It's backwards compatible all the way to ASP.NET 4.6, which means you have Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, Windows 10 support built in. And of course, for the first time, we also have iOS, Linux, and Android. So to demonstrate that, Martin is here today, and he's going to show you a little bit what that looks like. Now we come to a real live demo. Um, this is just hot off the press, so we just got this working actually this week, I think. And um, my name is Martin Regen. I work at Microsoft as software engineer in the Azure IoT team. And I'm here today to show you why we are so excited about .NET Platform Standard, which is actually the right name for that. So what I'm going to do in this demo is um, I <clears throat> have a C Sharp .NET Core console application that I will connect to an OPC server. And I will do that from three different platforms. First for my Windows PC, which is also my development platform. And then I have a, <clears throat> um, a virtual machine running on it, running CentOS 7. So next thing I will connect from that machine and then I have also here my MacBook. Um, as a last part, I will connect the same application for my MacBook. But now, uh, let's get started. So we see already here, this is the <coughs> .NET UA sample server. It's the one that you can download from GitHub. Um, it's just the best one for this case because you can see who is connected. <clears throat> and next, I go in my, in my Visual Studio application. Uh, in Visual Studio, I have done all my development. So here, this is the application that I'm going to run. It's called NetCore Console Client. Um, it's a .NET Core application that can be run on any platform. And in order to run the OPC UA class libraries on any platform, we ported them to .NET Platform Standard. So you can see the libraries here. I'm now starting the application. The application will just discover the endpoints and then <clears throat> it will exchange the certificates. So now I need to accept the certificate. And now it made a secure connection. It browses some nodes and it made a subscription and we just uh, check for the status uh, for, the, for the current time. And now we see <clears throat> when we go back to the server, we see there is a Windows.NET Core OPC UA console client connected with a subscription. Next, I will go to my virtual machine. This virtual machine is a headless CentOS 7 Linux installation. The only thing I had to do is I cloned my repository to that machine. Then I installed the CentOS 7 .NET Core RC2 bits on it. And <clears throat> I went into the folder um, that contains my project file. So in this folder, I just can run this command line. Can you see it? That starts .NET, and it will execute the project file in that folder. So it looks like it's working. Now I need to also check, accept the certificate. So now, this server has a secure connection. And we see now the CentOS.NET Core UPC OA console client is connected. And now I switch over to my MacBook. So here it's a little tricky because I have to move my window across. Okay, so everything is already prepared because I really couldn't type that way. I just press return and I hope that my access point, like my phone, is still working. Yeah, it's too bad. It's a live demo, so this one, it just worked before <laughs> when I set everything up. But in theory, like, um, then we would actually see all three clients here. Okay, so. Yes. 
So like I, like I said, we have, um, actually I have a screenshot here. So that's what it looks like when it's working. <laughs> so obviously um, the same app, once, once the Wi-Fi works, um, show up. What we have right now is we have the client, the publisher, and the OPC reference server ported to the stack, and obviously the stack itself. So right now there's still console applications because you know, the one part that is platform specific is the UI pieces. So when you build your UI, you, know, you obviously have to use the controls that the platform provides. But Xamarin has some great um, functions for that as well. And you know, this is, this is uh, a good step forward to making a single reference stack that is cross-platform. And again, this platform works in ASP.NET as well, so you can run ASP.NET applications for OPC UA directly on Azure, services, websites, whatever you want. So with that, I want to thank you for your time and listening. And um, oh yeah, there's, there's, there's actually one more thing. <laughs> Thanks, Steve, for uh, providing this. We're going to contribute the stack to the OPC Foundation GitHub open source for anybody to use. And we're also going to make a uh, NuGet package of the core stack so people can just use it in their projects by drag and drop into, into it. And we're pretty close to having something that we can release already, so expect that in the next couple of weeks. Thank you very much. So this long applause was a wow, right? Okay, so any questions? Uh, I guess there are questions in the room, a lot of questions, so I have to run here a lot. Which... Thomas Nehring, SAP. Uh, you mentioned the reference server. To what extent did you, uh, are you able to uh, port the uh, server part of the stack? So UATCP and also we're working on a HTTPS uh, transport as well, so, so we will have that ready um, shortly. And in terms of the server functions, I mean, anything that the standard server can do, uh, we can do as well. We didn't get, we didn't remove anything. Right. I'm interested in, uh, to know what um, if the stack can be used in the HoloLens and specifically in United 3D uh, framework over the HoloLens as well, because I know um, the .NET stack there is more limited. Sorry, say that again. What what part is limited? Um, the the .NET support in the Unity 3D. Uh, oh, Unity. The, yeah, Unity. Uh, the framework. So Unity. I mean, it's very possible that for for creating 3D apps in Unity, that you know you need to need to look into what what support it has. I'm not familiar exactly with what version of .NET it supports. However, the the future of .NET is going do towards .NET Core, and I mean ASP.NET. And, and the Universal Windows platform have already supported it. Xamarin is in the middle of it, obviously, it's a release candidate. I know that the Mono project is also uh, starting to take .NET core classes into, into its project, right? So as .NET core becomes more widespread, I'm pretty confident that Unity will also adopt it and uh, have support for it. So again, if there's specific things that are missing, let me know. And um, I'll, I'll follow up and figure out what the, what the timeline is for, for the support. Mm -hmm.